The cybersecurity skill shortage globally is the, one of the biggest issues right now for all the industry. And also, we have a lot of tech companies uh, setting their headquarters in Singapore and the region. The beauty of this course is we design all the assessment with consultation with the industry. Anything you do in this course is based on the industry needs. A student will learn all necessary skills such as penetration testing, incident handling, and all other necessary skills that the company needs to develop their security and having secure transition to the digital transformation. This means for all students, they can develop the career as a cybersecurity professional. Welcome, my name is Carmen, and I'm pleased to welcome you to our info session on the Batch of Computing Cybersecurity Program at Curtin Singapore. This is the last installment of our online webinar series of Curtin Singapore's new bachelor's degree launch in Singapore in IT, data science, and cybersecurity. This series aims to provide you with key information of our programs and for you to find out how you can future proof your career with a degree in Singapore with Curtin University. In this webinar, I'd like to thank our participants, especially those who are returning to this session from last week. And of course, our speakers, Dr. Hannes Herman and Dr. Reza Ryan, who is delving in with us from Perth, Australia. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the session, please feel free to drop them by clicking on the Q&A button on the bottom of your screen and typing your questions there. I'll bring them up at the end of the session and we will have time for question and answers. Today, our speakers are from the Curtin University School of Electrical Engineering, Computing and Mathematical Science, sorry, uh, Faculty of Science and Engineering at Curtin University. Without further ado, I will now hand over to our first speaker, Dr. Hannes, over to you, please. Thank you, Carmen. Good evening, everybody, and um, uh, thank you for coming along to hear about our course. Um, uh, let me introduce myself briefly first. Um, I'm Hannes. I'm one of the um, uh, directors of learning and teaching for the school. More importantly for this, I'm the course coordinator for the Bachelor of Computing. So if you have any questions about the Bachelor of Computing as a whole or the cybersecurity stream in general, I'm a, probably a good person to ask. Um, I won't talk that long about the generalities of Bachelor of Computing. Um, uh, Dr. Reza will talk much more specifically about cybersecurity in a moment. But let me emphasize that one of Curtin's strengths is our relationships to industry. We do um, focus very much on having a degree that has the right balance between theory and the, the industry linkages practice, basically. We do want students to be job ready, but not at the expense of having the underlying knowledge that allows them to continue learning, continue advancing later on in their careers. So our industry partners do a lot of things. We have a very active industry advisory council. We get um, uh, industry partners to come in and talk with us. We place students with industry partners. And some people, um, some of our lecturers, Reza in particular, work quite a lot with industry. And that really shows in our course as a whole. Apart from industry, 
Another thing that sets us apart really is the, the whole bunch of people, the staff and the students. We have built up in all of our campuses, not just some really good staff who are happy to talk to students, but we also aim to build up a community of students. Singapore won't have that yet because you're just starting, but that will be a primary aim for us. For now, there will be interaction with um, COMSA, the uh, student community in Bentley, and that will be something that will trigger things and really help out. So for example, COMSA can run um, uh, hackathons across all the campuses and things like that. We are also part of a wider family. We have graduates all over the place. Yes, in Perth, but also in Singapore, in Malaysia, in the US. And the more graduates we have, the more family we have, the more contacts our students have for go going into places and having more chances. And all of this also then feeds back to us. So those students who are out in industry, they come back and say, you know, this has changed. You really should put this in your course. And of course, we listen to them. Um, because the people working in the industry are the ones who really know what's going on. So let me talk again about the degrees. Um, we do have a uh, range of three-year bachelor degrees and you know, four-year for engineering. One of the things that's important, though, is our three-year degree bachelor of computing for Singapore is actually a two-year degree because you're doing it in trimesters rather than semesters. So that's a fairly unique opportunity. It does mean a lot more intensive study, but you come out with a three-year degree in two years, basically. Um, we insist on good facilities. We've been communicating with Singapore quite a lot about the computing facilities. I was now I'm communicating with a student online about that today. And we really want to make sure that the experience of students, staff, and community is very positive. While I'm uh, talking about that, we do have a lot of different courses, undergraduate courses, single and double degrees, science, engineering, etc. Noting that we count computing in the sciences um, rather than engineering, I know that differs in certain places. One thing I do need to say is for all of our courses, they are curtain courses. So if you take that course in Singapore or in Bentley or in Mauritius or wherever, you don't get a degree from Curtin Bentley or Curtin Singapore, whatever, you get a degree from Curtin. So your degree is equally valuable and it is just a Curtin degree. We have to ensure that the standards at all of our campuses are the same. Students will sit basically the same exams, they'll do the same work, they will be held to the same standards. And of course, that means we have to insist on staff being the same standards everywhere as well. We're actually very happy that Singapore is joining us because we expect to be able to find lots of very good staff in Singapore, which is a very nice thing for us. Um, we have a lot of offerings, postgraduate, undergraduate. We're not going to talk about all of them today. In fact, we're just going to talk about one of them we're gonna talk about the Bachelor of Computing Cybersecurity. So that's why I'm here because I'm looking after the Bachelor of Computing. And that's why Reza is here because he's looking after cybersecurity. He is at the moment our main cybersecurity person. So I'm a little ahead of schedule, but I think I'll pass it over to Reza now because I still have a little bit of talking to do at the end. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining this uh, webinar. And I'm glad to be here to um, talk about our cybersecurity major, which is part of the Bachelor of Computing. As you can see, we have a bunch of very interesting units put together to make the graduate of this Bachelor of Computing, especially who pick the um, um, cybersecurity major, get sense of everything they need to get their um, professional forward. So you can you know that uh, cybersecurity is a multidisciplinary area. 
which needs coding, which needs operating system, which needs uh, structure, data structure algorithm, bit of mathematics, databases. And before we move to actual uh, niche uh, unit, like a penetration testing or um, cryptography or incident handling, or in, in introduction, uh, intrusion detection system or so on, we need some background in that area, which I, which I can see this, this degree. We carefully choose the unit that help you to um, further advance in their, uh, in their career. So the cybersecurity courses are under major review. What does it mean? We try to make it a more applied learning. For example, we combine the, especially for cyber, we combine lecture and tutorials and, de and deliver it as a workshop based learning. We focus on project based learning and learning by doing. The reason is in cybersecurity, which is going uh, to be changed quickly every six months, every one year, we cannot cover all the aspect of the cybersecurity in a class within 13 weeks is none of the university can do. But the best thing we can catch up with this uh, fast moving and changing concept of cyber is giving you a project and facilitate that learning by giving you the practical um, uh, exercises and project that comes from industry with the consultation from industry or coming from them to give you, give you, uh, make you updated with the latest uh, trend or latest changes in that area. So we, for any assessment we develop in these uh, courses, we try to get the industry in, involved and uh, put their input in and see what is the latest problem in that um, real world things. And then we give you the bit of, um, uh, updated information as, as, as such. So I think being in the cybersecurity course, there is a th four ingredients of success. Need, you need to be a critical thinker, which, which is the university job at the end of the day to make you critical thinker. You need to understanding, have understanding the concept or having the background knowledge. Again, this is our job to give you the background knowledge. And this is a very, very important part of the learning in that cybersecurity, how to locate information on the internet. So Google would be your best friend as, as you go in cyber. And the last things, which is when you find the information, how to adapt it to your needs. This is, as I said, you cannot, even you cannot learn everything in a single year. You need to learn as you go. And that's why the project-based learning is the best approach for cybersecurity. And we, we, we take that in, the, in our course. You cannot learn anything um, in, at once. You need to learn it gradually, or sometimes you don't need to learn it even. You just need to uh, get it, adopt it, use it as long as you know the background knowledge. So we, another thing we have in our, in our university is we are not, you are not gonna stop in just the, the degree level. We have a master of cybersecurity, one year master of cybersecurity, which is designed to uh, make you more ready for the job, especially we get the industry involved like a, AWS, Cisco, Palo Alto, we're working, we, we're working with other, uni, other industry to embed their certification in our degree. So you, once you finish our degree, you can go and sit for the exam. So you have two qualification, one industry qualification and the other one, which is the, um, the university qualification. So this is something, these two combined together can guarantee um, your success in, in future job. So I thought it's instead of saying 
what we do based on that four principle of uh, success, I give you some um, example of one of the sample lecture that you might see in one of the units. So the, the, let's say the, um, the, the lecture is about packet crafting. You know, if you are not familiar with uh, cybersecurity, doesn't matter, but just don't also don't get a stock in keyword and things, just get the concept in a high level. And then we go forward. We just want to show you what we're doing in our lecture room or tutorial room. So or the workshop, as I said, we combine. So one of the things hacker use to, to modify the packet that shows that they are legit, but they want to attack the system. The first thing they might do was, is actually, they changing the source IP address, meaning that you attack the target system, you change your IP address, so they cannot detect you as an attacker. So for this specific lecture, we designed a, a virtual lab, which we are working on it to put it on the AWS so you can access it from everywhere you go. But this is a very simple, we got the attacker here, we got the uh, uh, machines that vulnerable to attack in the network. And then we try to teach you how to craft or modify the packet traffic. Um, and then the, uh, you understand by doing things, not only the theory. So the first thing I said is criti being critical thinker. And you can see as we go, you need that characteristic to, um, to find your way as you go. The second thing I was mentioned was um, background or knowledge background or concept. So we start with this, we facilitate this for you. So that's environment given to you. And then we start give you, giving you the, the concept. Uh, when, you, when you simple type in Google in your browser, there are a lot of protocol and software running behind the scene to bring that page, the beautiful page, we see it every day from the Google server to you, like a TCP protocol. If, you are, if I wanna make it simple, the protocol means a language that all the component can, work, can talk together. It's like an English language. I can talk to you guys, even the English maybe is not your first language. So we got a lot of multiple layers and and the uh, protocol involved to create a packet or traffic from the client to the server. So the reason I'm saying this to you because the packet crafting is about changing this protocol header and, uh, and try to deceive the server that you are the legit uh, protocol. Uh, there, okay, so uh, in my example, so you can see every level, every layer, it got some protocol involved. You don't need to worry about these names. You just need to know there is a, some protocol, some, lang some um, software involved to get you through the network. One thing, because my example for packet crafting in that lecture is, is going to be two hours. I'm going to con condense it in two minutes or five minutes. One of the things I'm going to show you how to modify during the, the traffic, uh, sending the traffic to the attacking machine is UDP header. So what you only think in, that, in this stage, only thing you need to remember from this slide is the UDP got two ports. What is port? Don't worry about it. Just, just think we give you that background before that you just remember two things, source port, destination port, which is the two numbers, that's it. So another thing we're gonna change using that packet crafting exercises is the ICMP, ICMP header. Again, you just need to remember two things, type and code. Different combination of the type and code according to the table underneath give you different message for that protocol. For example, if I put 11 in the type and zero in code sector, so you see 
the message would be TTL expired. So that's the only thing you need to know for now. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm doing the background knowledge in the first, second principle of learning and being successful in the cyber. So the next one is the IP, which in this header, you two things you need to know, source address and destination address. The source address is your IP address and destination address is the machine that you want to attack. So now we're going to exercise and practice this, what we said. We want to create a message and saying the TTL is expired or TTL is exceeded. We need to a computer, the 192.168.56.140 is the IP address of the source machine, which is the Kali Linux, the attacker machine, and the destination is the Windows machine. And as you can see, the protocol need to be stacked. So we first, we make the IP, second, we make the ICMP, and the third, we made a UDP. And during that, we put everything on top of each other, and then we use send, send the packet to the, to the target machine, which is the Windows machine. Within the Windows machine, I run the software that I can capture the traffic. I can see when I analyze the traffic, I can see there is a message coming from the ICMP protocol. The type is 11, the code is zero. So remember I told you from the IP, just remember two things, two IP address from the ICMP packet, remember two things, type and code, and then for the UDP two port, and you can see everything I told you, I create a packet, a traffic for the network and send it through. And then that's a one example of the exercises you're doing in the lab. I give you a question, let's say provide the command, scapy command to send an ICMP packet to the IP address of the one machine called Adrono. And then with the payload containing the text, the text, text string test message. So I don't show you the, I give you half an hour in the class to find out how to do this by yourself. And this is going to be the hint for you how to do it. I give you some hint as well and give you that environment as well and give you some time. And then what you do, you just need to figure it out, figure it out by yourself. We go to the third and fourth component. There is no way, if I want to teach you how to use SCAPI command or SCAPI tools, it takes 13 weeks. But what if I, if, you, if I refer you back to the principle three and four, which was locating information, customize it to your need. So you just need to Google it, find some resources that they use SCAPI um, uh, tools and see how they work and then customize it to your need. So I assume I gave you half an hour and you come up with this. So I just said, you create a packet, ICMP packet and to the Windows machine. I put this destination IP address, which is the 143 is a Windows machine. I give you the ICMP, pack, ICMP protocol on top of the IP, and then I put the test message and then send the packet within, within this network. And again, if you look at this part and I analyze this traffic coming through the network uh, car to the Windows machine, I see that you can see the test message send it through to the target machine. So I can show you with this couple of example or more and you doing it by yourself as well to how to modify the packet to attack the machine. So I hope I was able to um, tell you how we approaching the course, how we doing things in our course and what principle you follow and everything is a project base and you have a lot of opportunity to connect to the 
to the industry and you are working on the project coming from industry. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, uh, Hannes. So he's going to continue on uh, um, the rest of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. Um, hopefully you found those details of the cybersecurity major um, interesting. Um, now, I'm not a cybersecurity person myself, which is why we, we have an expert to tell you about the cybersecurity. Let me talk a bit more, just finishing up some general things from the degree. As I mentioned that we have a program at the end where students do little work. That's called our capstone project. There are the normal capstone projects where students work in a team to write software. And that is a real world project. So students will work on a real software solution for a real client. About half or so are placed with the industry um, partner, such as Talus or um, Emily Star. Um, and about the other half aren't, but everyone is working for a real client, working on real software, using industry processes. So using the same tools they'll use when they graduate tackling a lot of the challenges that students normally only get um, once they come into industry. A lot of our cybersecurity students do these projects, and that's really important because a lot of cybersecurity courses really focus on uh, teaching students how to use tools. As I talked about that briefly, it takes a lot of time to learn how to use a tool properly. But what you really could learn is learn the basics, those principles as I was talking about, learn how to learn, and then you can pick up those tools yourself. And more importantly, we're teaching you how to code. So you can be part of a team coding those tools and the next generation of tools. Noting also that our cyber degree involves machine learning, and machine learning is going to be increasingly necessary in cybersecurity in any modern form of computing but especially in cybersecurity. Everything that we do there is really aimed at producing a good product. That product is our graduates. And I haven't done one of these um, surveys in a while. I am doing one at the moment, actually, with the um, count graduates. Um, so I run the capstone unit. And about this time of the year, I normally put out a survey to those students. So those students at Bentley and in most of the campuses, they will be graduating at the end of this year. So they'll be finishing in November, December, and maybe starting their jobs or in you know, February in many cases. So I'm really surveying them very early. The last survey I ran was in 2019. I didn't run it in 2020. 21 for COVID reasons. Now that we've mostly recovered, borders are open, I thought I'd try it again. But back in 2019, when I ran that survey, um, I basically asked a few very simple questions. Do you already have a job lined up? Um, are you actually looking for a job? And if you don't have a job lined up, um, is there something that's holding you up? And the responses have generally been fairly good. So that last survey, um, fairly much all of the students who were actively looking for a job already had a job lined up at that point. So remember that this is this time of the year lined up for when they graduate for next year. So students are very sought after. Uh, a lot of these students were international students. So it's not that this is only Bentley students. Um, we do turn out a good product, and that is something that industry appreciates. That good product is the students, and we do that by having people like Reza teach students very well, and it is hard work. Let me be blunt, our cybersecurity degree is hard. You have to think, you have to be creative. We will provide you um, guidelines and measures, but it is tough. Um, but the rewards are worth it. We think so. Our students think so. Do talk to our students when you can. Um, do talk to people that come up because we will have people from Bentley visiting Singapore as often as we can. And of course, remember that 
all our courses are just those courses. So if you want to do a semester in Malaysia or in Perth or in Mauritius, you can. You can do, a, well, actually, Mauritius doesn't offer cybersecurity, so you, you can't do that for cybersecurity. But if you want to do some other units in Mauritius, some of which are also in a cyber course, you can do that. The point is that it should be flexible. There is paperwork, though, I warn you, there's always paperwork, but um, yes, the, you can do it. It is one curtain, one curtain degree, the same curtain degree everywhere. Let me just finish up with some feedback from our um, uh, from our previous students. And um, yep, the screen is just taking a little while to change. Here we go. Um, so we we get all sorts of feedback. I obviously picked a couple that I thought were um, amusing. So the general feedback, though, is that students learn a lot from us. Um, we work hard to get that balance right, the preparation for the real world, but also giving you uh, the opportunity to be prepared properly. You do have to be ready to go out and work as soon as you graduate. That's what Capstone's about partially. But you also have to have all that theory that you won't need just yet, but you, that you need to form the picture that will help you learning afterwards. Um, and that is where I will finish um, my part of the talk. Um, please contact us if you have any um, uh, questions.